the best power couple in aviation is pressure altitude and density altitude. They gonna ride and die for each other. And no matter how crazy density gets, pressure gonna stick beside it. Here's everything you need to know about density altitude. Let go! Boom! Density altitude is the field like altitude. Because remember, your plane will never perform based on where it is. It will only perform based on where it feels like it is. For example, when we calculated pressure altitude, if you want a review of that, there's a video on this channel. A link will be at the end of this video to kind of review pressure altitude. We were correcting for non-standard pressure to kind of get that calculation. We were taking the altimeter setting that we were given and we were plugging in some numbers and we were getting our pressure altitude correcting for that non-standard pressure. Cool, but one thing we didn't do, now you have to correct for non-standard temperature. So you correct for two things. Pressure altitude is based off the correction for non-standard pressure, and density altitude is gonna be based off the correction for the non-standard temperature. So 2992, that's your non-standard pressure. What is your standard temperature? It's 15 degrees Celsius. So remember that standard for both pressure as well as temperature. 2992 for your pressure and 15 degrees Celsius. These two calculations are very important because you're going to want to calculate pressure altitude and density altitude for all of your flight planning because again, your plane never flies where it is. It only flies where it thinks that it is and it can incredibly impact performance. For example, if you really want to kind of physically understand density altitude and the factors that play here, there's usually just three factors, humidity, temperature, and elevation. Think about this. If you've ever been in any of the southern states where it gets really humid, let's just say you're chilling down up in H-Town or you down there in Florida or you, you kicking back at the backyard barbecue in the ATL. Oh, Collie Park is not Atlanta. Whatever you doing down there, everything going good, right? You big chilling. But you ever say you was watching the weather out there and you, the weather says that, okay, it's 83 degrees outside. Cool, 83 degrees. But then you walk outside and it said, whoo. It feels like it's 95 degrees out here. And if you try to get out there and do any kind of physical activity, let's just say run a game of ball or go for a run in that, even though it's only 83 degrees, it because of the humidity, because of every, all the other factors, it feels as if it's 95 degrees. And what's going to happen to you if you try to get out there and run or run a game of basketball? You're going to feel like you, you're playing in 95 degree heat. You're not going to perform as well. You're going to be exhausted and it's going to wear and tear on your performance. The same way it impacts you, that's what it does to your plane. You don't like that. You're like, oh, this, this sucks. Your plane feels the same exact way. And that's why density altitude is important. Let go. Turn off the lights, a and light a candle. Hey, one time, we're going to calculate density altitude nice and easy. And there's only a few key things to remember to make this the easiest calculation that you can do for density altitude. Number one, you know you want to calculate pressure altitude first because remember, they go side by side. They are a power couple. You need the pressure altitude before you can calculate the density altitude to make your life easier easier. So let's just run some numbers. Let's just say if we get rid of the flight plan and we get an altimeter setting and our altimeter setting is 30.16. Okay. So we know we got to calculate our pressure altitude. Well, standard pressure is 2992, right? Okay. So we just going to take that 30.16, nice and easy. And we're going to subtract that 29.92. Nice review on that, how to calculate pressure altitude. We're going to get a 0.24. We're going to, we know it's always on a thousand foot scale because for every thousand feet we go up, we lose an inch of mercury. So everything's on a thousand foot scale. So we're going to multiply that times a thousand. We're going to get 240. Simple, nice and easy. And let's just say for this flight we were planning out, we wanted to be six bands up on cruising altitude. We want to be six bands up swinging and banging that thing. So all we're going to simply do is take our cruising altitude, which is six bands, minus the 240, and we get a simple 5,760 feet. That's our pressure altitude. We reviewed this in our previous video, nice and easy, everything nice and chill. Now we're going to utilize that information to determine what our density altitude is, okay? Boom! Let go! Hey, so check the vibe. If for pressure altitude, we were correcting for non-standard pressure. So with density altitude, we're going to be correcting for non-standard temperature. The standard temperature is what? 
15 degrees Celsius. And just like there's a scale, there was that scale that we were using in the previous video to determine the pressure altitude. It started at 299 or two at the, at the bottom on that sea level. And then for every thousand feet that we went up, we were taking off an inch of mercury, 28.9 or two, 27.9 or two, et cetera. There's a similar kind of scale that you're gonna use for density altitude. Boom! Hey, here's the scale right here. At the bottom, you got your 15 degrees Celsius. That's your standard temperature. And then for every thousand feet that you go up, you're gonna lose two degrees of Celsius. So it's gonna go from 15 to once you go up a thousand feet, 13 degrees Celsius. You go up to 2,000 feet, 11 degrees Celsius. You go up another uh, 3,000 feet, nine degrees Celsius. Every thousand feet, another two, shave off another two degrees Celsius. That's one of the key factors that you gotta remember and the key components that you gotta remember on your scale. It follows the similar scale. It's a thousand foot increment scale going up just like it was for when we calculated standard pressure. It was a thousand foot scale. So this is a thousand foot scale as well. You're just losing two degrees for every time you go up on that scale. That's important. That's key information to know. For say, for instance, this factor here. For our flight at ground level, let's just say they gave us a temperature and it was 35 degrees Celsius. Woo! That is 95 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's hot. So we're going to really understand how this density, altitude, and humidity, and all that plays a role. So let's just say it was 35 degrees Celsius that they gave us at ground level, okay? Cool. We do all our stuff, bloom, 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 bloom. We fly through the air, and we get up to about six bands. We six bands up right now, and we check our temperature gauge, the gauge of temperature on the outside, and it's still hot. It's still, but at this time, as you know, as you rise up with altitude, it's going to cool off a little bit. Let's say it cools off to about... 20 degrees Celsius. Still warm, but it's 20 degrees Celsius. Okay, so we know that it's 20 degrees Celsius and we six bands up, but let's look at our scale. What should standard temperature be at 20, at six bands? If we go up on our scale, we'll see that 6,000 feet, standard temperature is supposed to be three degrees Celsius. So it's supposed to be three degrees Celsius, but it's really 20 degrees Celsius is the actual temperature. So that's a 17 degree difference. So simple formula. For every degree Celsius that is higher, we're going to add 120 feet. So we have, that's a 17 degree difference, right? It's 20 degrees is our actual temperature, 20 degrees Celsius, but it's supposed to be three degrees Celsius. So that's a difference of 17 degrees. So all we're going to do is take that 17s times 120 and boom, we're going to get 2040. And that is one of the key calculations that we need. We're gonna take that 2040, add it to our pressure altitude. Remember, my pressure altitude at the beginning was 5,760. We're gonna add that 2040, and boom, there is our density altitude. Nice and simple, 7,800 feet. So what does that mean? That means that even though we're flying at six bands, we had 6,000 feet up, the plane is gonna perform as if we had 7,800 feet. That's why you wanna know what density altitude is. That's a significant difference in terms of performance. And all of your performance calculations and everything you will be doing for the flight, you should be calculating that off of density altitude so you're making sure you make it for that correction of temperature in addition to the correction of standard pressure. That's all you're doing. You're taking with the altitude that you're at and you're making the corrections for them. They gotta go side by side, baby. They're a power couple, the king and the queen. A boom. So key components to remember for your calculation of density altitude. One, the scale itself. You know it starts at 15 degrees Celsius. For every thousand feet it goes up, you lose two degrees of Celsius. Nice and easy. So you can be able to mark that up and calculate that. And then you want to remember this baby right here. For every one degree of Celsius, you're going to add 120 feet to your calculations when you get the difference of the outside temperature versus what the standard temperature should be. Multiply that times 120. Boom. You got that and you're in that thing. Boom! Density altitude can easily be calculated with a lot of digital devices like Four Flight, like your E6B, like a variety of other things that can give you the density altitude without you having to do it manually. However, there are two major reasons why you're going to want to not only understand what density altitude is, but know how to calculate it manually at the drop of a dime. And the reason why, number one, 
you're going to be asked to do this as part of your pilot journey, particularly on your check ride. You're more than likely going to be given some sort of density altitude calculation that you're going to have to calculate. So you're going to want to know how to do it manually for that reason alone, just so you can get your license. And then once you already have your license, it's a great idea for you to stay on top of it and refresh yourself about how to do it so you don't always rely on the technology to do it for you. At the drop of a dime, something can go wrong, but you still can know how to do it because you know how to do it manually. It's no different than if you're driving in the whip, you slipping and dipping that thing in your car and you relying on your GPS or Waze doing whatever you do, right? And then let's just say your phone dies. But if your phone dies, if you know how to navigate, right, you say, okay, I'm on this street, the freeway is over here, the lake is over here, I know exactly where I am, I know what streets I need to turn on, everything is all good. You don't automatically just get lost just because your phone died with the GPS system. Same exact scenario here when it comes to calculating density altitude. If you just rely on the technology and something happens where it isn't an immediate resource, you still know how to do it for any kind of flight planning or in the sky or at any given time on your own manually very easily. So that's why you want to stay on top of this and stay fresh with these kind of calculations. Hey, don't forget to like this video, comment on this video, share this video, and subscribe to this channel. I am Donovan Batiste, and this is Leadership Mindset, a place where you can come for free, fun videos for everything that you need to know for you to become a pilot. Because I want you to feel what pilots all over the world feel when we swinging and banging. Now, thank one time. Love you one time. Subscribe to the channel. Hey.